Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now we definitely don't feature enough AMD hardware here on the channel, which isn't a biased thing, it's just because I know more about Intel stuff. The launch of new AMD hardware always excites me and so does checking out their older creations. One such CPU that fascinates me every time I think about it is the FX9590. You see, back in 2013, before its launch, it was the subject of many articles focused on what was to be the world's first commercially available 5GHz processor. With 8 cores and an OEM launch price of $900 or £700, it was certainly priced up to match that of its competitors' high-end offerings, though that price did drop to $300 for retail release. Aside from the price, they were hard to get, needed extreme cooling solutions and would only work in a handful of 990FX motherboards because of the 220 watt TDP. These days though, that's all changed and the AM3 Plus platform is pretty cheap to buy into because it is considered somewhat obsolete. Though in my opinion, FX processors are still alright if you can find one cheap enough. Back to the FX9590, in the words sort of in the title of this video, are referring to the fact that 5GHz is the turbo boost speed. The base clock speed is 4.7. The FX9000 series were also essentially just FX8000 series chips that had been overclocked, which makes it sound very gimmicky, but they certainly made an impression on the world of computing, though whether it was a good or bad one is down to personal opinion. The FX9590 is certainly cool to me because of what it is and how it was marketed as opposed to how it actually performs. Speaking of which, at the time, you could have expected this chip to trade blows with Intel's i5-2500K, with modern day i3s and Ryzen 3 CPUs being similar in performance. If we quickly take a look at some CPU based benchmark results, the 9590 scores 109 and 710 in the single and multi threaded tests respectively of Cinebench R15, which is actually a pretty decent result. So for editing and rendering work it will still be a great option, but I definitely just can't recommend it. While we're on the subject of rendering, you could expect a 30 second video clip at 1080p 60fps to render in 24 seconds with Premiere Pro. Pretty quick, but again, nothing that a cheaper, cooler and overclocked FX8350 couldn't achieve. Let's move on to some games. With the newest COD, the game was set to high and the resolution was 1080p which both the 9590 and 1060 are capable of. Keep an eye on the CPU usage here throughout to gauge a rough idea of bottlenecking. The game ran well with 83 frames per second on average and a 1% low of 53, but with a 0.1% low of 10 FPS, that indicates some stutter throughout, which I did notice, but I don't think it was anything that would significantly distract you from gameplay. It might cause a little bit of an issue in multiplayer though. It was a similar story in Witcher 3, and with an average of 68, 1% low figure of 39 and a 0.1% figure of 11 frames per second. To me, the game felt more than playable with the high settings and medium post-processing preset, but the area around Novigrad can be a particularly taxing one on a lot of hardware, and although it's not one of the newest games out there, it did release after the CPU itself. Evil Within 2 was actually a more balanced experience, though it doesn't run very well on a few different components that I've tested if I'm honest. High settings were playable, but there were a few frame drops with an average frame rate of 41. This was followed by a 1% low of 34 and a 0.1% low of 16. Actually playing the game felt smooth enough though. If I'm totally honest, it isn't really worth testing many more games because I don't think this is something you should consider buying in 2017 unless you want it because of its status as a 5GHz CPU, sort of. It's definitely still capable, but you should just get the FX8350 if you want an older AMD processor on a budget, or a Ryzen 3 1200 if you have a little more to spend. Either way, the 9590 still sounds pretty cool on paper, even if it never really offered anything spectacular in terms of performance. It's unpredictable in stability, and a huge power hog too, but if you're feeling like something different at the centre of a PC build and don't mind the heat, have at it. Guys, thank you so much for watching the video. As always, if you enjoyed it, please leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy it. Let me know what you think of this processor as well, as if you own it, of course. 
and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.